And as our last speaker, Evgeny, had said, you know, if you want to befriend a doctor, here I am. I can be all your guys' friends, so yeah. Um, so today's talk is going to be about AI for vision um, and how we can quantify, quantif uh, quantify vision behavior. So who are we? We're a group of um, engineers, physicians, and scientists. And what we're really interested in is being able to take all these different types of unique data that we can now capture in terms of psychometric, biometric, and sensory information and making it to meaningful insights around vision behavior. So a lot of the dis uh, talks and discussions earlier today focused on you know, how to utilize smarter machines or how to build smarter machines. And what I hope at, at the conclusion of this talk is basically how we can learn from learn to do both by actually understanding the most imperfectly perfect machine, which is you and I, the human body. So one of the ways that we learn is through uh, what we see in the world. And if you look at the trends, and these are old trends, this is from 2014. If you look at the US, we're number six on that list of how much we're, we, we consume information through vision. So there, that's roughly about seven and a half hours on a device. And you start seeing the propor proportion being mostly mobile, and that's, you know, it's 2014. If you think about 2017, if I asked you guys in the audience, how many of you have at least two phones? Actually, I'm kind of curious. How many of you guys have two phones? You know, there's, there's a good portion, and so you can see how much more we're actually, you know, tethered. Which brings me to why, why quantify vision behavior? Well, when we think about it, there's been rapid proliferation of new technologies. You know, this, you know, I like to call it the red pill ubiquity. We're, we're consciously choosing to be more and more engaged with, different, with, with our devices and you know, different realities with virtual and augmented and mixed realities. And so one of the things is, is first of all, like, what does this do to our actual body in the sense of like, our eyes and in terms of the ergonomics? But just as important is, is you know, how, when you have this much sensory overload from all these different ways of consuming content, can you actually engage somebody, direct them to something that you're trying to uh, push them towards, some kind of experience or engagement? And what I want to show you today is how we can leverage the problem, which is technology, to actually find the solution. So again, I'm very much focused on the seeing part of your senses, just because of my background. Um, but you know what we see affects what we do. I like this. I like this pick because it basically just kind of shows that there's a stimulus, there's some processing, and then there's some some response. There's an output, whether it's a movement or a behavior. And when you think about why vision, so I'm not going to get too sciencey on you today, but. The way that we, we learn and perceive is mainly, do, mainly around vision. And the, the picture that, that's there on the left-hand side of the screen is just showing you your cranial nerves. And your cranial nerves, you have 12 cranial nerves on the right and 12 cranial nerves on the left side of your, your, your head. And they're involved with, with how you bring in information around the world around you. So how you see, smell, hear, touch, all of these are all related to the cranial nerves. And the interesting thing about that is eight out of the 12 cranial nerves are somehow implicated in your vision. So roughly about 60 to 70% 70, 70 of your brain is related to vision in some capacity. So why haven't we thought about this before? Like why am I actually up here speaking? Well, one of the big things, and uh, to borrow the term democratization, is you know, how do we measure how people see the visual stimuli? Right now it's been pretty much non-democratized, it's been locked into the clinical and lab settings. So you see all these different ways that we measure vision. That's only going to happen if you come see your eye care provider. But how do, we, how, do we, how do we take those same mechanisms and put them into the wild where people can use it for other types of uh, use cases? Then the other thing is, is you know, we now have this commoditization of different ways of measuring biometrics. You know, first start off with you know, measuring heart rate, in you know, steps, respiratory rate, head positioning, so now really getting into eye tracking, and there's all these different ways of measuring, measuring things, but how do we actually create meaningful models and insights into user engagement, into you know, comprehension, fatigue, performance, all these different types of models around behavior? You know, a, lot of, 
a lot of the methods currently are just more around being assumptive versus you know developing the proper experiments and how to how to, how to use machine learning in in an effective manner. And I think I believe Gorov had had spoken about that a little bit in his talk. So what we've done is first of all we democratize how you can measure stimuli with with our platform and doing it in a very passive way so it doesn't seem like you're kind of taking a test or something like that in whatever kind of content or experience you have. So you're able to develop whatever you, you want on top of this and still be able to get meaningful information as to uh, how someone's interacting with stimuli. And then marrying that with the biometrics and you know the stuff that we're already able to, col to collect. So that's basically understanding how the stimulus affects the response and measuring those two together. So in terms of applications, I'm just going to, you know, this isn't an exhaustive list. I'm just going to focus on like the HR and productivity. What you'll see is you'll see an interactive experience. So I'm going to press play here and there'll be like, you know, you'll, oh, let me just press, press play and see if this works. Okay, cool. So you're playing this game. What we're doing at the same time in the background is we're actually measuring out the interactions we know like w what the size of the stimuli is and you know where it is on the uh, on the display and what you see in the far right at the very top is you see field of view and so the bottom the green part is your central field of view so this being centrally located whatever objects are centrally located on the screen versus peripherally and then the next one down the blue and the yellow is around attention so it's around focused attention, so your ability to multi-track. Focused attention's the green, I mean, excuse me, the purple, and then the yellow on that is, is going to be uh, divided attention. And the reason why this is more of like a linear um, uh, increase is because the game gets, gets harder, so there's, there's just more, more objects on the screen, but you can mix and match it any way you want. And then below that, you'll see that, you know, the light green is true positives, true negatives is a dark green, false positives is, is a red. So you can see how just in like an interactive gaming experience, you're still able to get um, this interesting information around vision, stimuli, and how we're inputting. So, how can you take that information and making it into some kind of meaningful use case? So one of the things that we did was we looked at productivity in the workplace. And how many of you are in front of a screen at least five hours a day? That should be almost most of you, because I've seen you for most of this time, people have been on their phone for a little bit. So, um, so what we did was we looked at folks that you know, had, had screen time of between five to nine hours. And uh, we looked at physical activity and how that interplays with uh, screen time. And in this, in terms of worker productivity, what we noticed that those that actually reported um, at least four hours a week of physical activity, they actually had an increase in their, in their vision performance index. And I, it, offline, I can talk to you a little bit about that, but a measure of your overall visual function in relationship to, to performance. We noticed that there was, the more you, you worked out and the more active you were, just more, uh, the more efficient you were in terms of just vis vision-oriented tasks. Where are we headed? So I showed you kind of like how we're able to measure psychometric uh, aspects and like basically input. And now we're looking at how to do also be able to look at closing the loop between input and output. And so this is on an Android device using the front facing camera. So you guys might be familiar with this game. It's an oldie but a goodie. Um, and you know, what you'll see here is, is as the gameplay is going through, what we're doing is we're actually capturing blink rate, gaze on, gaze off interpalpebral fissure distance, which is basically distance between your, between your eyes, the distance between your eyelids, excuse me. And so you can start taking those and creating models around fatigue, for example, in terms of, you know, how engaged somebody is because you don't want to show them an, an ad or something if they're like, you know, not going to be in the right mindset in terms of fatigability to be able to actually comprehend what's on that screen. So our goal is to, is to close the loop, is to be able to take and measure inputs and be able to also measure your response and your output towards that. So when I started this talk, I was basically showing like, you know, for us to learn how to make smarter machines, if we can actually mimic and model from like measuring actually human behavioral responses, then we can make very, very much more powerful models in general, depending on, uh, regardless of the, uh, of the application. 
So in terms of some of the insights, like just from this talk, like you know what we're doing at, at Visario is you know we're developing out advanced science models. So you know we're making it so people that don't have a visual science background or a neuro ophthalmology background can utilize this um, this technology to empower whatever they're doing in machine learning. And we're using you know uh, basically we're leveraging deep learning models, TensorFlow. We have a training set that's comp that, that comprises two million um, multimodal face, body gesture, physical signals. And we're really focused on being able to understand at a very deep level how people engage in the wild. So one of the cool things about this is we want to make the, we were creating technology where you're able to capture real-time behavioral uh, information that you can utilize. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>